Hi, everyone. Welcome to Young Adult Catholics, a podcast for young adult Catholics. My name is Janelle. I'm Daniel. And I'm Kayanne. And today we are going to be having the topic on um, the desecrated statues, everything going on right now in the current events, the Catholic Church, um, the burning of the churches and stuff like that. And to discuss all of this, we have a special guest, Kaylin. Um, all the way from Texas, who is the owner of Catholic Teen Posts on Instagram. And so basically, um, on June 22nd, there were two tweets that came out that has gotten a lot of attention. And this is what it said word for word. Yes, I think the statues of the white European they claim is Jesus should also come down. They are a form of white supremacy, always have been. In the Bible, when the family of Jesus wanted to hide and blend in, guess where they went? Egypt, not Denmark. Tear them down. The person who wrote this tweet also said, yes, all murals and stained glass windows of white Jesus and his European mother and their white friends should also come down. They are a gross form of white supremacy, created as tools of oppression, racist propaganda, they should all come down is really crazy and Janelle's yeah. gonna continue. Since this tweet went out, um, we've had the following happen. The statue of St. Junipero Serra was desecrated in Sacramento, California. A statue of our Blessed Mother was vandalized in Brooklyn, New York. A statue of the Virgin Mary was beheaded in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Another Virgin Mary statue was burned in Boston, Massachusetts. In addition, we've had the following. Burning of the Mission San Gabriel Gabriel, right here in California, Queen of Peace Catholic Church in Florida, the Cathedral in Nantes, France, Santo Nino de Pandacan Church in Manila, Philippines. And mind you, um, there were people in the church in Florida when it was set on fire. Also, Catholics who were defending the statue of St. Louis, um, Louis um, were beaten by protesters. And these are just a small amount of the persecution the church is facing today. Our Catholic Church is being persecuted, and no one is talking about it or standing up. If it were a mosque, it would be an uproar. If it were a Jewish temple, it would be all over the news. But because it's Catholic, it's not. It's only, um, the only publicity we've seen on it are from small cat social, like, Catholic media sites, such as Catholic Connect and such as Catholic Teen Posts on Instagram, which is why we invited our lovely guest here today, Kaylin. Uh, before we begin, we're going to start off our podcast like we always do with a prayer. Yes, uh, let's begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord, um, we just pray for every single establishment that you've created, all your churches, all the statues, all the angels and saints um, that are represented and being threatened by people who are threatening your church, Lord. We just pray for protection of all churches, statues, uh, religious and lady. Protect us, O Lord, from all evil, from all sin. St. Michael, continue to do what you're doing and defend us and protect us from all evil, from the devil and his evil uh, minions. Lord, as we have this conversation today, we pray that we can bring light to the evil that's going on in this world and uh, help give people some peace and hope that through prayer, through our Blessed Mother, through our angels and saints, that we can fight this evil um, each and every day through the things such as prayer and sacraments. Um, and through this conversation, may we just grow in holiness, grow in love for you, Lord, and desire to live with you and forever uh, in heaven. Let us entrust in uh, St. Michael's, we say, St. Michael, the Archangel, oh, the Archangel, the May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. All God's angels and saints, pray for us. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. So thank you for joining us today, Kaylin. We're excited to have you on here. Um, so why did you start Catholic Teen Post in the first place? So um, I was at a sleepover and it was at two in the morning and 
I just thought, um, you know what, I'm going to make a Catholic Instagram page um, dedicated to Catholicism so that I can help evangelize the youth. So that's what started it. <laughs> I don't know if you want the next one. Too. Yeah, <laughs> I'll get the next question. Um, wow, all from a sleepover. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome to see like how big of a following you have now, especially. Thank like, wow. You. Um, can you give us a little more of like a background of yourself? Sure. All we mostly know is that you're from Texas. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I am a 21-year-old traditional Catholic. I go to an FSSP parish. Um, that's the TLM, the um, Latin Mass. Um, I've been running this Instagram page for about seven years now. So I was 14 oh. when I started it. Wow. Um, <laughs> so that's pretty much it. Wow. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is crazy. I'm so excited. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's a real honor. <laughs> it's a real honor for us, actually. <laughs> um, so, you know, we, for all our listeners here, we reached out to Kaylin because we saw that the good work that she was doing in reporting what's going on in our Catholic church, um, which is why we wanted to bring her in. So as we mentioned in our introduction, our Catholic church is being persecuted and destroyed. Um, can you let our listeners know, especially those who are not familiar, who exactly are these people attacking our churches and what are their motives behind it? So the main people that are attacking our churches are um, Antifa and mostly BLM protesters. And if you go to the BLM website, they actually say there that they're just against everything. They're for everything the Catholic Church, is, Catholic Church says we shouldn't be for. So they're just going to go after everything that we believe in because they want to destroy the traditional family. They want to destroy the Catholic Church. Um, they just, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, um, I know, you know, in the beginning, um, a lot of Catholics were quick to, quick to share. Um, yeah. It's just really difficult because like the, the owners or the people who made or founded the Black Lives Matter movement, you know, they claim, they straight up say they're Marxists. And, right. you know, it's, it's through, like, the traditional family, the unit is getting destroyed. Right. Um, right. So, but thank you for sharing that and just giving a little bit of info on that. Daniel, do you want to? Yeah, I just wanted to go off of that. Um, for our friends who don't know how bad Marxism is, it leads to communism. And all the liberties that we have to practice our faith in this country could be stripped away if we continue to blindly or you know people just this is, comes back to people don't know who they're supporting um and it's like yeah uh, blm maybe it started out good or you know a lot of people who support it have good intentions but the true organization uh, they're just so it's the way how the devil is um his arrogance of like showing you i am doing something wrong willing to put it on their website mission of what they're doing and yet people, there's plenty of Catholics that still support them. It's like, guys, you not know who you're supporting. It's like, just as we should support, know the church and our faith and read up on the faith, the same thing comes to the companies and organizations and foundations we're supporting. We should know what we're supporting. We should know where our money and our time and our effort is going into. Um, so, and then like this stuff is super easy to find too. It's not like anyone needs to take years of researching. This is something as simple as going to BLM's website um, so yeah, now switching topics to Junipero Serra, um, a lot of his missions are being attacked, the ones that he helped create in all of the coast of California from San Diego all the way to, I guess, Sacramento. I don't know if any further, but uh, can you tell us who he was and then um, who he really was and just give him some, give background on who he was and why he's a saint and why the, ch the church uh, made him a saint, basically. Sure. So St. Junipero was a Franciscan professor slash scholar of theology. Um, he first was inspired by St. Francis Sol Solano for his missionary work in South America. And in 1969, St. Junipero arrived in San Borja, <laughs> sorry, San Borja to begin his mission. His mission was to bring salvation to the native people. St. Junipero established the first of nine Catholic missions in California, and then 12 more after his death. St. Junipero was drafted a 33-point Bill of Rights for the native, natives living in, on his missionary compound, and then he took that, the Bill of Rights, 
walked from California to um, Mexico City to present it to the Viceroy. So, and upon arrival, he had died. So he fulfilled his mission and the reason he became a saint was because he was advocating for the native people. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that, which is why it was so heartbreaking to see all of them tearing it down. And it's all because a lot of people, and this again for everyone, like before you support something, you should really take the time to know. Especially, I just found it very interesting that this activist on Twitter posted this, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't study the Bible or understand the Catholic faith. Um, because, you know, if they knew, like, he, Junipero Serra, St. Junipero Serra, went to Mexico City, as Kaylin said, to present the Bill of Rights because the indigenous people were being treated wrong. Um, I, oh, I forgot his name, but on one of recently Dr. Taylor Marshall's um, YouTubes, he was, he took um, a professor and he gave um, some history, too, on this. And I think one of the things to remember is that the Spanish, um, the soldiers are different from the missionaries that right. were here. And I think that's what people are mixing up that like, oh no, it's the soldiers who were like abusing the indigenous, which is why St. Junipero was like, we need to treat them as people, as God's children. Right, he, he was protecting them and the abuse really started after his death, so. Mm -hmm. Exactly, so um, for those of you listening, please educate your friends and let them know, like let them know that's not that's not who they say he was. A lot of people also claim he was a slave owner in genocide, but there's no, no. there's no background to these right. claims, you know, there's nothing. <laughs> it's just empty words. Um, one of the biggest people, questions we get from people, however, is even from Catholics themselves is, why should we care about the statues burning? Why should we care about the churches burning? There's so many things going on. Um, what would you say in response to that? I would say we should care because this is our Catholic history. This is who we are. And in today's world, you know, it's easy to be bullied or pressured into doing something because the crowd is telling us to do that. But our Catholic faith is, should be the core of us. And this should be, you know, our mission to protect what is at the core of us. They're not going to stop at these statues and churches. It's not just letting them have peace by taking a couple away from us. They're going to completely destroy every church every statue that they possibly can. So we shouldn't sit back and let it happen. Mm -hmm. That's true. I always liked, um, I forgot who said this, but I always like what they were saying. It's like, how would you feel if someone came into your home and took photos of your mom and threw it on the ground? Right. You would stand up for that. So why not, why are we not doing the same for our churches and for our statues? Exactly. Yeah. Um, just really quick, I want to like, mentioned two things. One, um, going back really quick to what Daniel was talking about with the BOM movement. Um, I'm gonna be honest, like, because I wasn't educated and because like, I was going along with the trend, like I fell for like, putting the Black Lives Matter organization link in my bio and like wanting to be a part of a movement that would help people. And I was so blind that I didn't realize that so much of the org what the organization stands for was against the faith like that's how easy it was because I consider myself like a traditional Catholic and the fact that like I fell for that um it was just really crazy to me and it wasn't until like I had a friend really pointed out to me and to the point where she even decided to unfollow me because she's like um I'm glad you're like politically motivated and stuff or like you you're learning and and stuff like that, but like educate yourself. And that's where it really like sparked inside of me. Like I need to understand what's going on. And also like regarding St. Juniper Sarah, like I, I studied from a Catholic private education from kindergarten to 12th grade, you know, and um, I actually didn't know anything about like the good things that St. Juniper Sarah did because even my own Catholic education didn't really depict him as someone who was nice, you know? And it wasn't until like that video that Janelle mentioned about Dr. Taylor Marshall that um, I really brushed up on my education about who he is as a saint. <laughs> and it's crazy, like 23 years later, I finally figured that out. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to add that. And um, so one question that I think is really important that all of us needs to um, 
have an answer for it because a lot of us could feel hopeless or confused or uncertain about how um, how to go about things nowadays. Um, what advice would you go give to those who want to protect the church like us? You know, like what can we do as lay people? So one of the things that we can do is go after these um, counties legally. So there's actually a GoFundMe going on right now to help um, prepare lawyers to go against these places, these counties, um, for freedom of religion, basically. So if you want to go there and support that, um, I can leave a link. But also, um, I know Catholics are standing up and, you know, guarding these monuments, but I think they need to be armed or else, you know, things like them being beaten up is going to happen. So more Catholics need to band together and be prepared to uh, protect and guard these monuments until, you know. Wow, I didn't know that about the counties. Janelle, you wanted to say something? Yeah, no, no, I didn't know that either. That, like, that kind of gives me hope. Like, yeah, yeah. I no idea. Oh, that's so, I'm, I'm glad because, yeah, we, you know, after, why is it that Catholics are always being the ones where we can't practice our religion and right. our statues are being burnt? Um, so it's just, oh, that's, that's so nice to hear. So for all of you listening, people, <laughs> be sure to follow up on that. We're going to be sure to put a link at the end of the video um, yep. in our captions. Um, thank you, Kaylin, for sharing that because I think yeah, that's no something problem. that we can really take a part in for sure. Yeah, I just wanted to touch up on like Kayan, uh just like I think it's our culture almost I guess like the word like FOMO right like we uh <laughs> oh every, all my friends are posting is I gotta post it too and it's like everyone's swimming in one direction but it's the wrong direction like go on the path follow the path and if that means you're by yourself or with a smaller group go on the path of truth and I mean that's just the, the path to heaven in general it's a na no a narrow path um and so it's like, I want to support because all my friends are supporting. It's a good cause, but uh, the devil is so good at, he, he'll like, he has a lie, but he'll sprinkle in a little bit of truth to make it, make us people who know the truth think that, oh yeah, it's good. But in reality, like under, once you peel back, I don't know, you peel back the layer of onion, you like see like, wow, this thing is actually really bad. And like, you know, we could, uh, I even donated to like one of Sean King's, uh, things and I was like oh man realizing now what I know I'm like father forgive me I didn't know but now it's like with anything right once you have more knowledge you can then uh, your thoughts and your your views can change and so like okay I know more now so how can I act differently how can I act uh, more appropriately towards what my faith is uh, asking of me and so um, do you know if any other organizations Besides like the county stuff, the, anything else that might be somewhere we could support by our money? Unfortunately, no. I can't think of any like Catholic um, black group that's, you know, for black rights and whatnot that we could support that aren't BLM. I unfortunately haven't seen any of those, but hopefully we can inspire people through this podcast to maybe fundraise that or start something like that up. For sure, because I, you know, there are a lot of black Catholics out there who are pro-life who are for the family unit. Um, just because they're not on social media doesn't mean that they're not there. And I think right. like a lot of our a lot of um, our young people today on social media, they forget that. Um, that, you know, there's people out there when you go to churches in different states, you know, there's there's people out there too. So uh, we encourage all of those who are listening to please like if you find anything, let us know. You can comment on at Catholic underscore team underscore post as well like put those comments in and say hey i found this i found this information like let us know so that we can keep sharing this and that's like one of the most important things we can do um kaylin i just wanted to ask do you have do you have any more words of wisdom or advice for our followers for those who are listening to us sure um my advice would just be keep educated on these subjects keep Keep up with it as much as you can. Unfortunately, the uh, the misinformation on St. Juniper, it's really easy to find that on Google, just five minutes on it. So just continue to be up and don't trust things by its surface level. So just continue to do your own research. Don't just listen to what everyone else is saying. Do your own research is what I'd say. Yeah, I'm bouncing off of that just really quick. Like, um, 
something that really struck me that I heard about St. Jennifer of Sarah is like, you know, it's not easy to be a saint. Like they don't give that title to just anybody. And I had to realize that it's such a basic statement, but it's so true, you know, like they they do a lot of research, they do a lot of investigation and before they like give you that title of being a saint. Like it takes hundreds of years sometimes. Um, so yeah, like definitely brush up on like your education about St. Juniper and Sarah because like everything on the media isn't always true. Most of the times it isn't, which is why like it's important to take courses or classes or like get information from educated people. Yeah, yeah um, I just wanted to bring up like, just, you know, if we just go through your page, right? You get hundreds of comments how do you go about dealing with like hateful comments, ignorant people? How, how do you go about that? Um, luckily throughout time, I've gotten um, a good band of apologetics, uh, apologists that come onto my page and they kind of help me respond and they've helped educate me too. So awesome. surrounding myself in educated people has educated myself even more on these kinds of topics and spurring me to want to learn more about it. So would you, um, would you have any recommendations for other pages besides yours that are also really good sources of truth and knowledge? So um, Catholic Imagery is a really good one. Uh, a, a small story behind um, his account recently, um, he had posted against the vandalization of the statues and whatnot. And underneath the comment section, um, somebody said the night prior to the St. Gabriel Church being burnt down that they were gonna do this and that he was gonna do this. And little did he know his name was attached to his account. So no matter whenever you comment on something, your name is on it. So he had posted it and um, the police have contacted him to get more information about the man who helped burn down the church. So um, just one little Instagram post can actually help change things and find the people that are responsible for this. Wow. Praise God. <laughs> yeah. It was used for something good. Um, yeah. But wow. That's, that's incredible. And it, it's, it's just funny, <laughs> it's like people who do stupid things, well, they tend to do a lot of stupid things, basically self-incriminate themselves, so. Right. Hopefully, you know, he gets his just pun just punishment, um, if it was just one guy or for multiple people, just because, well, I know recently that church too was recently, I guess, rebuilt or whatever, so it's just like, wow, um, it's just awful. Um, and then just been learning uh oh we lost can just been learning just like with uh, notre dame that burned down like that wasn't just accident either like they're saying right. that was also an act of hate towards the church so i don't know if you want to talk about any other previous um, churches and statues that have been messed with i think it's unfortunately going to continue to happen even more and that's why we have to prepare ourselves and arm ourselves for this type of thing to happen um going back to kind of something that we talked about in the beginning about people saying like white Jesus and whatnot. Um, a lot of the times our lady and our Lord, for example, our lady will appear to people in their native um, country. So for example, our lady of Akita appeared as Japanese or in Mexico, she appeared as, you know, Hispanic. Um, I think that a lot of cultures will depict the religious family as their own because we are family, you know, that's our mother, that's our father. So even in Africa, people will depict Jesus as black and Our Lady as black. It's just kind of a cultural thing. It's not really something that we're, we all know that he was born in the Middle East. So obviously he's going to have a uh, olive skin tone. So nobody thinks he's white. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. a, <laughs> Go ahead. A, just like, I forgot what the movie was. Oh gosh. 21 Jump Street, and then it's like, there's Korean Jesus, like, there really oh, yeah. is Korean Jesus. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I found it so interesting that that Twitter activist, um, that he would say that, because I'm like, I don't think anyone ever said Jesus was white, like, if you right. have faith, like, we know that he was a Palestinian Jew. Right. They don't look white, you know, like, uh, but I guess he just wanted to take that and go with it, and just going off what you said, like, um, how like that's the mother of us all like in John chapter 19 verse 26 where um you know he says woman behold thy son son behold thy mother to John and that just shows like she's the mother for all of us like Jesus gave her to all of us which is why 
um, for those who are listening, like that's why she appears um, as, as the people of the area. She does um, have the Marian apparitions in. So thank you, Kaylin, for bringing that up because I think so many people forget that. Um, I also, I wrote like a little thing about this and I can share this later if anyone wants to just follow up with me. And, um, but I wrote like a, a, it's part of a newsletter and I was explaining how at the time, you know, um, so Jesus uh, passed away on Calvary um, and later on the church, St. Peter went to Rome, right? St. Peter went to Rome to start the Vatican. And we have to remember that at that time, um, they worshiped the Roman gods gods with a little g <laughs> so these are like thor these are like zeus this is mitochondria that's not one but i don't i couldn't think of it <laughs> right? um, and we have to remember that at that time like people didn't really ethnicities like weren't really mixing or races and cultures so like they didn't know what jesus looked like and so they're they uh, made him in the image of what they're used to they're used to the roman gods they're used to thor or zeus that's how you'll see those statues so um it's easy to say, oh, they made white Jesus, but really, if we think about it, you know, if we're someone um, living in a country and we're, we don't know, like, how he exactly looked like, because it's been years, then we're gonna, we're gonna paint images as, like, the people that we see around us, especially if we know that Jesus is in every person, um, and that God, we are made in his image, that's why um, we're gonna depict the art in different ways, so just wanted to share that, please don't, get mad at our artists who were just looking, you know, they were just looking at the people around them and use that as inspiration as well. Right. Cause that statue of St. Junipero was built in 1930. So. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah. Wow. So it's been there for yeah. quite some time. Yeah. Again, a piece of history being destroyed is an outright of, you know, people should be outrighted about that. Yeah. Oh, I think also one thing to comment, especially as a Californian, we're all Californians here, um, <laughs> is that St. Junipero Serra, he came here before the United States was even like created. So for those who are saying like he was supporting, I don't know what they say, like white supremacy. I don't know how that's <laughs> possible when it was still Alta California. Um, you know, we have Baja California before where we are right now in California. This is Alta California. So it just boggles my mind a little bit how how that would be white supremacy, but you know, people are uneducated and need to know more. Honestly, also like coming from a sociology background also, um, it's so with sociology, I feel like it's so easy to claim different things because of the way that you sociologically analyze it. It's kind of like when you psychoanalyze stuff, like you put a label to it, it kind of sticks. You know, kind of like when you're diagnosed with like a mental illness, it kind of sticks. I feel like people start like tagging on those different like labels um, to what's going on too. I mean, yes, it's important to analyze. I mean, that's how we know that from Marxism comes communism, right? Because like of the sociological like perspective of conflict theory, for those of you who don't know. Um, but like, just because something appears, it doesn't mean that it is. I think that's also something people need to understand. Like, just because um, there are similarities in it, it doesn't give it its name. It doesn't give it its, its exact thing. You have to look back at its history. You have to look, like, if we didn't know about, like, the history that, like, Kaylin just told us that it was built in the 1930s, and, like, that claim would stay even longer, you know, but because we're educated now, like we know that like, it couldn't have been like an, a product of white supremacy because it was before white supremacy even existed. Right. So, yeah. I think um, it, it's, it's like, it's a probably it's a human thing. We want to have control. And so we tend to limit God to certain things and God is limitless but we want to limit God and put him into these categories. And it's like, no, we can't do that with God. God is beyond that. And, and so, um, yeah, just, uh, we, it's just, I don't know, it's just human nature, this desire for us to control things. I guess that's where it comes from. Uh, but yeah, I think, uh, I think that's it. Do you want to add anything else, Kaylin? Um, I just say pray for all of us, pray for the people involved, um, pray for the protesters that they have a change of heart and that they see what they're actually doing is wrong. Um, pray for those to have a conversion of heart. That's what I'd say. 
Yeah, I love that. Mm-hmm. That, um, that that's what's just been coming to me too. Is just like, at the end of the day, that's all you should do, right? Just pray for the conversion. Pray for our own conversion as well. Right. We need to change each and every day as we've been changing. Especially this year, I feel like I've learned so much in just one year, just a seven months that's been 2020. Um, but yeah, we just want to say thank you for coming on here. Really, just thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It was a huge honor. Yeah, oh, thank you. Uh, so, um, yeah, we, we're excited to get this episode up and uh, all of our friends that are um, been having these kind of questions. Hopefully this brought some light, some truth and answers to their questions. Um, but yeah, I think, um, I think we'll close up in a prayer. I don't know if the ladies want to lead one, lead this one. Can, you know? Okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Go. <laughs> Okay, then I can lead it. Okay, let's mark ourselves with God's love in the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, we praise and thank you for this beautiful discussion, this honest and this truthful discussion, Lord, where us as traditional Catholics, us as Catholics who seek to share the truth because of how much we know you and how much we love you and how much we want to serve you, Lord. Um, like, Lord, we ask that you continue to infill us with the graces to um, continue fighting for your truth, continue fighting for your glory, Lord, in the midst of all this chaos, Lord. Um, We ask that you please um, watch over those who are following us, those who um, watch or listen to this episode, Lord. Um, may they inf- be infilled with the Holy Spirit. May they be infilled with truth, Lord, so that they can go out to seek more truth, Lord. And Lord, um, we ask that you continue to send down your guardian angels for each of us and protect us. And St. Michael, we ask that you continue to defend and protect us from all evil, from the devil, from his demons. As we pray, St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. All God's holy angels and saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. All right. Thanks for listening, guys, and we hope you enjoyed it. God bless, and we'll see you in the next one. Yak out.